What do you think was the worst thing you did, you know, for the drugs or while high on drugs? I think being going to think uh, I was getting high with, you know, pimps and prostitutes, uh, pimps and hoes. And they said, well, my best audience, they were my my fans, number one fans. That's what they, they did, but the Christians didn't do, the Muslims didn't, all the friends and relatives, the pimps and prostitutes would, would just love on me, you know? And uh, because the show was always on too, you know, they loved, they wanted me to come by and I avoided them. But finally, you know, I'm like, oh, hey, how you doing? But I'm not trying to be with them, but they took me in and they gave me money. They showed me the pistol that anyone messed with you, let us know. You know, hey man, you're funny. You're gonna get another show. You're gonna get it again. You know, so they were doing what, and the others weren't. So, uh, which Ali hated. He he tried to do an intervention to get me from like I heard you and out there, and I lied to him, so I wasn't I wasn't getting high. I wasn't getting high with drug with the pimps and the prostitutes, which I was. Uh, so then, because they're so paranoid, I wanted to be alone. So I think the worst thing that and and only God kept me alive. I went to a hotel. I went main with tell you which hotel but I said I need to be high by myself so because I'm I'm calm when I'm high I'm not all over the place you know mm -hmm. I I listen to music I try to get you know listen to music or something or porn you know something to get my <laughs> attention off yeah. of the fact that you know all that because you start being distracted so being in a hotel free basing alone by yourself now the fears are they gonna smell it you know uh, they're going to knock on the door anytime now. The police going to come and put me in jail. But initially, you, you know, the high, you know, makes you oblivious to all of that. But then that paranoia kicks in. So now you've had, you have this, you, you're in the hotel, like, oh, good. No one's here with me. I can get high by myself. Great. And then you come down. The drugs, when the drugs are gone, you coming down off of it, you know. But I knew by then, being a pro, you had to have like weed. Have a little weed, gotta have some sleeping pills, you know, because you'll be up, you know. So, but then you take the sleeping pills. Now the fear is that, well, I die in my sleep. Mm. So even that, so it, it, it's, it's, it's like, it's just total hell, you know. And, and then when they were trying to make, you know, my agent wanted me to do stand up and I was, was doing stand up. Uh, I did like, had 15 minutes of stand up. Because Shirley Hemphill saw that in me. I didn't see that in myself. And I got accepted by Mitzi Shore at the comedy store. And, and so then I went to was in New York and the agent said, look, they want you at such and such a place in Greenwich Village. Uh, and I went, I'm still, at that time I stopped the Coke, stopped drinking the Coke. I mean, taking the, uh, the free base, but I was drinking hardcore, absolute uh, vodka, you know, uh, and Remy Martin still. And uh, so I didn't want to do that show, and I kept drinking and drinking. And by the time I got there, I was so out of it. Well, the lights in this, you know, New York has all, all these lights, and the lights were just dancing. I was just so high. And I realized I can't do it. I'm crying. I don't want to do stand-up, you know? Uh, all I have is 15 minutes. They want me to do an hour. I don't have an hour, you know? And... Uh, so I asked someone, can you take, tell me how to get back to 888 8th Avenue? That's where I was living. And uh, that's when I fell down. And uh, uh, when I got to, the, to my, I was staying with these friends who weren't there. And I got on my knees and I said, Lord, you know, even as I, even as I speak to you, I want some, you know. I, could, I want the free base, I want all of it, but I know I'm gonna die. If you don't intervene and take this away from me, you know, and 30 years later, you know, uh, and I admire people in AA and CA, but for me, it was Jesus Christ. He took it and I have not looked back since. Wow. Yeah. So for 30 years, you've been clean and sober. 30 years. Amazing. Yeah. Well, some years later in 2003, Fred Berry dies. Yeah. Um, and he was having the drug use as well, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah. I think he had a, a stroke. He did. And then as he was recovering, he ended up dying. Uh, he was married six times to four different women. Yes. Yeah. Two of which he had married twice. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I miss him so much. He was a rascal, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And his kids look just like him. Oh, do they? Yeah. Well, he has a girl, the daughter who I'm close to, and he has a son. They look just like him. Yeah. Crazy. They dance like him? 
Huh? Uh, I think they say the boy does. Okay. I heard that. I got to see that. Yeah. <laughs>